Hi everyone, welcome to this Video Song Frontier video. My name is Jay Wakefield and what we have today are James, I'm seeing double here, four HP printers. Now only getting on. Um <laughs> Yes, there's only the two. Um two HP printers, scanner, copier things, all in one devices. Now you might be wondering, A, how did I come by these? And B, why do I have two of them? Well, I was perusing FreeCycle and uh, someone was actually offering an HP all-in-one. Now, this is not to add to my collection of technology and certain things. I'm, I'm not becoming... I'm not um, collecting printers in the same way that uh, Brandon Bishop does. And, and to be honest, besides, he's, a, he's basically a generic 2000 printers. So, you know, they, w they wouldn't really make interesting collector's items, you know, for another at least 10 years or something. Um, but um, what it is, is my own personal printer, which is an Epson Stylus DX6000, uh, which is actually over there, is, well, it's being an Epson. The rollers seem to be shot. Half the time I keep, it, it won't feed in paper properly. Um, I've had problems with the ink cartridges and banding and goodness knows what. And I really do feel <coughs> that it's time to put the Epson out to pasture, really. Now, my first printer that I had with the 2001 custom belt was a Lexmark 2030 Colorfine 2. My family's first printer was an HP 670, an, an HP DeskJet 670. You know, which I really, um, you know, I, I quite liked. The only problem with that printer was it was extremely slow. The problem with the Lexmark printer is that the carts leaked, the cartridges, and it was and it was very expensive to refill as well. Well, to actually print. Lexmark printers, cartridges always are. So after, you know, after I'd used the Lexmark 2030 and my mum had gotten an upgrade, she actually decided to install, well, she actually uh, let me have the DeskJet 670C. So um, I used that for a wee while. And then I started using the HP DeskJet 916C which came with my mum's median in 2002. The me um, <coughs> and we used HPs in school, uh, both the inkjet and the laser variety. And um, Action on Disability used a nice wee office jet. Now, some of you may be thinking that, Jay, why all this sudden HP fanboyism? I thought you absolutely hated HP. Well, I guess first things first. It's not that I hate Hewlett Packard. I don't. I just don't like their consumer grade desktops or laptops because I, I believe that they're built to the the belt by the lowest common denominator to the lowest common denominator. 
what I mean by that is it's all really cheap parts and they all will mostly go wrong within an unacceptably short amount of time. I had Jay Whitefield computers for a while and uh, m most of the HPs I got in were usu usually had big hardware problems. Things like the motherboard, things like chips overheating, th you know, things like that. And of course I had the HP Compact Presario CQ61 which died. You know, and that was after I'd rebuilt it last summer. So, I'm not too big a fan of HP's computers. However, HP printers is another thing. I've often said that HP should just wind up the computer business altogether and just stick to being a printer manufacturer, because that is where they seem to excel. I do like HP printers a lot. The reason I got the Epson stylus was because when I was at university, well actually what happened is I went to university and I was put in a box room and I had an HP, I had a, a flatbed HP scanner at the time. My, um, it was a hand-me-down from my mum, it was a Scanjet 4T300C. Again, a fantastic product. The scanner was good. It uh, came up with clear images, certainly for the time anyway. I mean, I, I just needed it for simple text, in, text image paperwork kind of scanning, and it was fine. And it came with a whole cartload of software. Well, it came with Adobe Active Share, Corel Print House 2000, and Trellix Web Design. I remember this because, well, installing this software and then uninstalling HP uh, Precision Scan LTX. Seemed to upset the 2001 custom belt somewhat. I was able to install it in the future when I was actually using the scanner though, and it was absolutely fine. Anyway, I, um... So like I said, I was in a box room. I couldn't actually... I didn't have the room to have both printer and scanner. So the scanner had to go back home with my parents, which left me in a difficult position because I had no scanner. Now, in UK universities, students with disabilities are entitled to something called Disabled Students Allowance. And what that is, is you actually get um, an allowance. Um, <clears throat> it's not yours to spend. You'll have an assessment of needs, and then what they actually, what that assessment of needs shows up, you know, what you have difficulties with, that allowance will then go to that allowance will then go on to fund things that will make you know things easier so for example you know i got uh, the ergo ensis laptop but i also got an epson stylus dx4000 all in one printer my then girlfriend got an epson stylus D dx6000 which was, uh, you know, it was slightly better, it had a screen, it had a card reader, it was just a better printer. And actually a wee bit faster than my DX4000. So, I had the DX4000 up until 2010 when I bought my, well, she was my girlfriend at the time, I bought her a laser printer. Um, to print her dissertation on, and I got her DX6000 which is what I still have today, but that's now starting to be a bit long in the tooth. Point is, I probably would have never chosen, apart from the photo printing quality, I've, you know, I've, I've known Epson's to be exceedingly good at photographs. I probably wouldn't choose an Epson if I was going to buy a printer with my own money. In fact, I generally don't choose Epson. Epson. It was only the one printer that was originally available. So I spoke to the guy and I said, um, I'm needing a new printer. Do you, do you know anything about these? And Did they work? And the guy said, well, yes, they did. But unfortunately, I had no power supply or USB cables to test whether they still worked. He said, um, <clears throat> I have um, another printer, if I can find it, if you're interested in it. I didn't really say anything to that. But, uh, but I did go and see him last night. And 
The first, the uh, original printer that he offered was this, but he found the second one and he said, you're welcome to it if you want, if you want it. Now what this is, is an HP PSC 1315, and this is an HP PSC 1350. So I said, yeah, go on, I'll, I'll take both printers, I'll see if I can test them, whichever one works, you know, I'll keep. And if they both work, you know, I'll free cycle the one that I don't want. So let's have a look at these then. Unfortunately, I don't have any DPI ratings on me at present. Um, <clears throat> but what I can tell you is that uh, the 1315 is a, it's a budget orientated all-in-one. As in it's got a scanner and a printer. Um, I think they're both budget orientated. But uh, this one is, um, again, I only have, um, I, I quickly looked up some uh, PC, uh, some uh, reviews last night so I could do this video today. As a result, I only have US sticker prices. This, I think, was originally about uh, $120. This was about $150. There's not much in the price, really. And in fact, um, this printer is actually older than this one. Go figure. Um, but they do look very similar. But first, the 1315. What this is, is a basic all-in-one device. But it has a nice wee USB port on the front for Pixbridge. This one is a wee bit more advanced, and it has a card reader. So what you get <coughs> is um, a paper tray, it's uh, front loading. Um, and then if you pull down here, you, you get access to the cartridges. Now, if I can do this without painting myself um, with superfluous ink, or damaging the mechanism. I don't know if you can see this, but these cartridge, uh, but these cartridge uh, bays, seats, whatever you call them, brackets. The cartridge carrier is empty. <clears throat> so if I wanted to test these printers, I would have to buy some cartridges. That's not a problem. I can get super cheap, super leaky ones just to kind of check that it prints. So if I just try and manoeuvre the 3050 out of harm's way for a minute. You have, um, like a lot of uh, multifunction devices, you do have some buttons that will let you um, man the printer without the computer. So you've got a power button that's on resume. You have um, and some LEDs, check paper, check print cartridge, and then cancel. My printer's got a screen, so it actually will tell you on the screen. It'll actually give you some therapy diagrams. Um, that, I believe, is number of copies. That'll probably be a digital readout. Nice. This is um, the size, so you can either have it 100% or fit to page. Um, is it a plane or is it a photo? Is it black or colour? And then a scan button. <coughs> Which I believe must invoke the software. If we have a look at the back, we can actually see that um, the roller cover is exceedingly badly yellowed. Damn it, Randy. You near yellow. Um, here is the roller cover. Um, Uh, the rubber on these seems to be not too bad, although there is a bit of a mark on this one. So I'll just, um, just put that back on. And... Ew. Nasty black ink. Um... And then you have the usual HP proprietary power jack. 
and a USB N. So like I said, there's no cabling. And of course, I'll give you a look, this is inside the scanner. So I've been used to actually lifting up the scanner bed to get access to the ink cartridges. Does shed a wee bit more light on the situation. However, if you're one of the the many, I'm sure, households that use their scanner as some sort of a shelf, not having to lift the scanner up every time you want to insert a print cartridge might be for you. <coughs> so now the 3050. Well, the 3015 sports a light grey design um, with a dark smoke coloured paper tray as was the HP Way, the 3015 sports a nice navy blue chassis. And I believe that uh, this could be a slightly darker shade, the scanner bed. <coughs> the scanner lid could be a slightly darker shade. And this scanner lid, but that would be just minuscule differences. Once again, the paper tray up, the paper tray and access to the print cartridges is operated in the same way and yes once again this machine's cartridges are noticeable only by their absence unless they're invisible which I believe they are not why would you want to print an invisible ink? Um, so I, again I would need to ink this printer before I could actually do any testing on it. Now, what sets this apart? Like I said, it's got a multifunction card reader. I don't know what this button does. Probably sends it to print, or maybe it does something in the HP software that will uh, download the contents of a given uh, fl uh, flash storage card to your computer. Again, if we look on the back, we see the HP proprietary AC uh, power jack, DCN, and a USB port. Now, it was said that this printer has Ethernet and wireless B, but I think it might have been offered in various flavours, because this printer does not seem to have an Ethernet port anywhere on it, and I've looked. Let's have a look at the rollers. Quite nice firm rubber. I don't know if that is enough of a test, if I'm honest. <coughs> that is one thing that would concern me because I did buy an HP desk jet for my office. It was uh, of a similar form factor to these, and it had an onboard scanner, but it was wireless, but the rollers did not feed paper in. I just couldn't do it. Um, so like I said, the only way to really test this would be to actually spend money and print, you know, try and print something. But let's have a look at the top. <laughs> Once again, I think it's actually pretty much the same as that one. You've got uh, the on button with uh, LEDs for check paper and check print cartridge. Um, number of copies. Um, whether you want it to scale to fit the page or to scan it at its original size. Uh, use plain or photo paper. Uh, Use black or uh, make a uh, black and white or color photo copy, or would that be grayscale? And um, start the scan. Once again, it's a printer um, scanner copier. And if we have a look at the uh, scan bed, <coughs> the uh, chassis underneath it is dark. Unlike this one where the chassis is actually light. So what am I going to do with these printers? Well, <coughs> well, 
When I got the printers, I were I was not aware that they were this old. Although I probably shouldn't have ruled it out. I probably should have asked for a model number. But sometimes on FreeCycle, <coughs> you can't stand around asking questions. Sometimes you've just got to go and grab it. It was my intention to at least ink one of these printers. I was actually sliding towards the 3050. <coughs> I mean, even if it doesn't have wired Ethernet, it might have had wireless. Um, you know, like I said, I was engine towards this printer, but now I'm not entirely so, so sure. A, a replacement power adapter will cost me you know, quite a bit of money, and the ink cartridges, you know, while I can get them for like four pounds on their own, the fact that I'm going to have to factor that in as well as a, you know, new power supply, as well as the fact that my printer actually basically works, I just don't feel that I can actually warrant putting money into these machines. Certainly not now, I've actually slept on it. Although... I did try buying a power supply earlier today, but eBay derped the eBay iPad up, completely derped, so I just cancelled it and was, you know, while that was away thinking about it, it gave me time to actually really reflect on whether I really wanted a power adapter. And I decided that, <clears throat> no, I didn't. Now, I used to have a couple of these power adapters because I had a couple of HP printers. Like I said, I had the one for the office, and then I had the one that I was given that didn't work at all. So I, you know, kind of threw it away. So I think what I'm going to do is offer them back to the FreeCycle community. That way anyone who might have wanted it the first time around will be able to at least have another go. Um, the reason I know these printers are so old is because they actually do have manufacturing dates on the bottom. If we take a look. Okay, it's upside down. That was uh, March the 3rd, 2004. Uh, very little help to me there. And this one was November the 25th, 2004. So actually the lower spec printer is actually the newer one. And another thing that uh, worries me, I mean, I'm, don't worry, I'm not trying, please don't, you know, try and think I'm trying to be a snob here, but the thing that worries me about having older printers is support. Now, I'm aware that um, the 1315 actually does have Windows 8 drivers, it seems like, and I did download those, a whole 400 and goodness knows how many megabytes worth, and HP's incredi sometimes incredibly slow servers, um, out of the 3050, you've, you can only get the drivers through Windows Update. <coughs> Microsoft have dropped support for certain things before. And I'm just wondering, how long before the drop support for this printer? Windows product cycle is actually uh, moving along pretty fast now. So, you know, I, I just don't know how much longer this would be supported. Um, I mean, I know these printers would work absolutely fine with my uh, Dell Dimension 4600. But, um, at the same time, I, you know, for a main computer and a main printer, I really want something that actually, you know, goes and, and will remain supported, at least, you know, for the foreseeable. My my own printer does work. It does take some coaxing, but I know I'm going to have to replace it soon. Um, and to be honest, I've actually seen a printer that I would quite like for not much money on eBay. I'm not going to buy it now. I'm going to save up for it. But you know, I I would I'm I'm starting to think why put money into these when I can put money towards a printer that I really want. Um, you know, I want to buy an office jet. 
So um, <clears throat> that is what I think I'll be doing in due course is, you know, replacing my Epson with an HP Office Jet because it'll just, you know, they are just better printers. I know this because um, Action on Disability uses an Office Jet. So with that said, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these to free cycle because I know that someone will be able to put the money into it, into these and test them. Um, you know, and I've, it's, it's not like I've taken someone else's chance away. Well, I took someone else's chance away to get it last night, but hopefully, you know, if I free cycle these now, they'll be able to get, they'll, they'll be able to have another chance at getting the printers. But, um, yeah, I really, really, I think these are good printers. I mean, the reviews certainly favoured them. I probably should add this in. I am very grateful for these printers. Um, you know, I, I wasn't expecting brand new stuff off FreeCycle. That's just not how FreeCycle works. However, because I do run the latest version of Windows, I do worry about what support a 10-year-old printer would now get. I hope that clears it up. I'm not ungrateful. Anyway, that's me rambled on long enough. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos. If you have, please feel free to subscribe. If you like what we do, please feel free to like the Facebook page. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I hope you'll all join me for my next one. Thank you very much.